All right, people. I believe everybody is doing great, nice, and absolutely fine. So, we will be discussing the kinematics chapter in the next few minutes. And you must be knowing that this is one of the high weighted chapters. You can expect two to three questions in your need physics. Okay. Now, listen to me very carefully. The first concept we have over here that is distance, and we have displacement. What is distance and displacement? Let's suppose. I am saying I am moving from point A to point B. I am moving from point A to point B. So if I join A point with the B point directly, we call this as a displacement, okay? That is the distance between initial point and final point, okay? Now, if suppose, let's suppose you are going through this path. We consider this as a distance and this will be the displacement. I hope you got it, okay? This is the actual distance traveled, actual path covered, and this is the shortest path between A point and uh, B point, okay? We say this dis displacement has got a proper direction from A point to B point, but this distance does not have the direction, it has the magnitude only, okay? So this was distance and displacement. Now, let's suppose we have a question. If we are moving from A point to, let's suppose, C point, and then we are moving to B point back again. So A to C is four meters, and C to B is 3 meters. How much is the distance covered? Distance is the total path covered. That is 4 plus 3. That is 7 meters. And how much is the displacement? Displacement is only this much. That is the distance between A point and B point. Okay. How much you have displaced? That is only 1 meters. Okay. Now comes the velocity. What is velocity? Velocity means how fast you are moving, okay? And in what direction you are moving, that is the velocity. So how fast, the more fast you move, the more velocity you have. Now, if we talk about velocity, we say velocity is displacement upon time. Now, instantaneous velocity. If you are moving from A to B, if we say what was your velocity at any particular instant, that is what we call instantaneous velocity. How do we write that? dx by dt, okay? Now, my dear friends, remember one, Thing. If the car is moving towards right, we consider its velocity as positive. If the car is moving towards left, we consider its velocity as negative. And when it comes to the average velocity, average velocity is simply total displacement traveled upon total time taken. If you are moving from A to B, how much displacement you have covered? How much time you it took? So delta S divided by delta T will be the total displacement. Okay. Now comes the acceleration. Acceleration means simply how fast your velocity is changing change in velocity like over here it is the example we say here velocity is zero then it becomes 10 meter per second then it becomes we say 18 meter per second here velocity is changing means car is accelerating and if you have to find the change in if you have to find the acceleration you say acceleration is simply change in velocity upon change in time that is delta v divided by delta t now what is positive acceleration positive acceleration means at the direction of acceleration is forward remember one thing Sir, if acceleration is forward, does that mean car is moving in the forward direction? We say no. Okay. So, if velocity is positive, we say car is moving in the forward direction. What is negative acceleration? Negative acceleration means acceleration is backward. As simple as that. Direction of acceleration is backward. Okay. Now, average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration. If you are moving from A point to B point, if change in velocity is delta V, change in time is delta T, we say average acceleration is delta V by delta T. And if you are moving from A point to B point, if we say how much is the acceleration at any particular point, particular instant, that is average acceleration delta V, dV by dt. Now, retardation, what is retardation? Retardation means negative acceleration. Sorry, I am I made a mistake. Negative acceleration does not mean retardation. Retardation simply means slowing down. If car is slowing down, means it is retardation. Like over here, car is moving in the backward direction with 20 meter per second and after some time its speed becomes, we say, 10 meter per second. So, let's find acceleration, V final minus V initial. So, back in final velocity is minus 10 because it is moving towards left. Minus of initial velocity is minus 20. So, here acceleration is coming out to be positive. Means this acceleration is retardation. Why? Because car is slowing down. Okay. Okay. Retardation can be positive also. Retardation can be negative also. Now, this is the relation between acceleration and velocity. Okay. But here, here, it is in terms of displacement. A is equal to dv by ds. I hope you got it. Okay. Now, next thing. Guys. If you have to, if you are given displacement and you have to find the velocity, I want you guys to differentiate at that point of time. V is equal to ds by dt. And if velocity is given, 
you are supposed to find the displacement, then in that case, you will have to do the integration S is equal to integration V dt. Similarly, if velocity is given, if velocity is given and you are supposed to find acceleration, what you are supposed to do is we say uh, dv by dt, that is differentiation of velocity. And if acceleration is given, you are supposed to find change in velocity. What you have to do, we say, sir, delta V is equal to integration of A dt. Remember this format exactly. Okay. Now, let's move on to the next one. Then we have the equations of motion. Let's suppose the car is starting from this particular point. Okay. And we say uh, it has covered the displacement, let's suppose S. Okay. And we say acceleration in this case is constant. After time t, we have to find its velocity. Guys, if acceleration is constant, we'll use this particular formula that is V is equal to U plus AT. This will give us the velocity of this car after time t, after time t. Remember, we can use this equation only if the velocity is constant. Next, guys, if I say, tell me how much displacement it has covered, you can use S is equal to UT plus half of AT square. This will be also, this can also be used when acceleration is constant. Next, we have, if I say, guys, the body is leaving with a velocity v and finally its velocity becomes v, okay, it's u and finally it is v, acceleration is constant, tell me how much is its velocity after displacement x, velocity after displacement x, that will be v square minus u square is equal to as, this is the third equation of motion. Then you have, my dear friends, displacement in nth second. Like if I say car has started from this point at t is equal to 0, the car is over here. At t is equal to 1, car is here. t is equal to 2, car is here. And we say, sir, this is the displacement covered in the fourth second. This is the displacement covered in the third second. This is the displacement covered in the second second. Okay. Similarly, if I ask you the displacement covered in the nth second, that is this one. Let's suppose this one. Displacement covered in the nth second, that is u plus a by 2, a is the acceleration, 2n minus 1, okay. So, this is the displacement in nth second. One more important concept, that is the ratio of total displacement in 1 seconds, 2 seconds, 3 seconds. What does that mean? Let's suppose the car is leaving from this point, okay, after 1 second it's reached over here, after 2 seconds it's reached over here, after 3 seconds it's reached over here, okay. If I ask you how much is the displacement covered in 1 second, that is this much. If I say this is x, then we say displacement covered in 2 seconds is we say 4x. Displacement covered in 3 seconds is we say 9x, okay. And displacement covered in we say 4 seconds is 16x. And you can write the ratio something like this. Displacement in 1 seconds is to 2 seconds is to 3 seconds is to 4 seconds is to x is to 4x is to 9x is to 16x. Now we have ratio of displacement in first second, second second, third second. What does that mean? If I say car is leaving from this point, after one second, it is over here. After two seconds, it's over here. So this much, this much is the displacement covered in one second. First second. This much is the displacement covered in second second. This much is the displacement covered in third second. And if somebody asks you how much is this ratio, you will say x is to 3x is to 5x. And then we say is to 7x and so on. You can see this is over here. X is to 3x is to 5x is to 7x. Displacement in first second, third second, second, third second and so on. Then we have the stopping distance. If a car is moving with a velocity u, okay, we applied the br brakes, okay. So we say it will stop after some displacement. It will not stop immediately. It will stop after some displacement. And that displacement will be this much and that is u square by 2a. U is the velocity with which it is moving. A is the acceleration. Okay. Now, now, my dear friends, my dear friends, this is a very important one. Question. On this, there are a lot of questions asked. You can see over here, this one also. Take the screenshot of this one and you can learn this. Then we say motion under gravity. If you release an object, something like this, it falls under gravity. That's what we call motion under gravity or vertical motion. Okay. We say if you release a ball, something like this, okay, an object, something like this, it falls under the acceleration due to gravity. That is, we say 9.8 meter per second square. Now, guys, let's suppose if you have released this object from certain height, how much time it will take from that height till the surface of Earth? We say that will be the time of flight and that is under root of 2h by g. Now, if I say you are releasing this object and it will hit the Earth over here, with what velocity it will hit the earth, that is what we call the velocity of hit. And in this accelerate, in this, in this uh, motion under gravity, we say initial velocity is zero, acceleration is, we say g. And this velocity hit of hit will be under root of 2gh, okay? Now, my dear friends, now we have ground to ground case. If you are throwing a 
object okay uh, in the upward direction so it will reach certain height and then falls back how much is the maximum height it will attain that is u square by 2g similarly in this case how much will be the time of flight in going up and falling back we say that is 2u by g u is the initial velocity g is the acceleration due to gravity then we have the position time graph i want you guys to see over here if a car is moving something like this okay the car is moving something like this so we say at t is equal to 1, its position is 1. At t is equal to 2, its position is 2. At t is equal to 3, its position is 3. If I ask you to plot its position time graph, it will be the straight line. And in this case, if I ask you to find the slope, you'll say slope is tan theta, that is perpendicular by base. And here, perpendicular is delta x and base is delta t. So we say delta x by delta t is velocity. So I can say slope of position time graph gives us the velocity. Okay, okay. You can see this question also. Here in this case, I am asking you to find the velocity of A and B. Clearly, we can see over here, clearly we can see over here, slope of A is greater than slope of B. So velocity of A is greater than velo velocity of B. Okay, now these are the questions that you can see over here also. And you can take the screenshot and you can basically see. Then we have velocity time graph. My dear friends, if we take a look at the velocity time graph, let's suppose I'm making the VT graph something like this. If I ask you what is the value of slope in case of VT graph, slope is tan theta and tan theta will be delta V by delta T. And what is delta V by delta T? We know that is acceleration. So I can say slope of velocity time graph gives us the acceleration. Similarly, if somebody asks you what is area under velocity time graph, this area. So area under velocity time graph gives us the displacement okay everybody knows it that is integration of v dt is equal to s okay next we have acceleration time graph if we make the acceleration time graph over here we do not define the slope in this particular case i hope you remember that okay but when it comes to the area under acceleration time graph we say area under acceleration time graph is integration of a dt and we know integration of a dt is what change in velocity that is delta v so area under acceleration time graph gives us the change in velocity so thank you so much this was all about it kinematics 1d is clear crystal and clear each and every single thing i have covered over here so make sure you subscribe to the channel like there and do comment in the description below uh, down below let me know for which chapter you want the next uh, we say quick revision